It's a whole different world. Your world is the world of your mind. It's the theater of the mind. And I have around me friends and beautiful actors and beautiful people. And the author who wrote the script, Ian Martin, Kim Hunter, Mason Adams, E.G. Marshall, Brian Williams. And without any further ado, I'll show you just how we do it. We start the show with E.G. Marshall, who is our host, and you will hear one of the most familiar and most exciting sounds that ever was created for radio. And just sit back, as you've been told, and relax and enjoy. Uh, let's stand by, people. Max, okay? Very good. Take it. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. The fear you can hear. Tonight I hope you have strong stomachs for we're bound on a Caribbean cruise. Oh, we don't expect rough sailing on the way, so if you are easily seasick, have no fears. Save them all for your landing on the twin island of Mauritia and San Dorin, for it is the home of and the living dead, the soulless legions of men who are called zombies. As we pick up the story, an innocent American couple on their honeymoon have watched in horror as their friend, the son of the king of Moesha, has been killed by a group of skyjackers. Taken as hostages to a hotel on the island, Patricia finally loses control. I, I, I can't hold out any longer. Oh, it's I, I... okay, baby. Let it go. Oh, God, darling. What a nightmare. I, no, I, I no, can't... Don't, don't try to talk. Lie down. Just lie down. And don't worry. I feel like crying myself. Your poor friend, Chris. If I ever get out of this, somebody's going to pay for him. Those awful things. Steve, is it possible? Could, could, could there really be such a thing as a... As a zombie? Of course not. It's just superstition. But you saw Chris fire two bullets right into his body. Yes. And he didn't even flinch. Cogito ergo sum. What? I think, therefore, I am. Pat, look, under any other circumstances, I'd be fascinated. This is my field. Then you do believe there are walking dead? Certain that they will never be allowed to escape alive. Pat, Steve, and Hawkins... A government agent, also held hostage, plan a desperate escape. Make like we're turning in. Then we sneak out the French windows onto the balcony. You go off to the right, opposite end from the steps. When that zombie reacts to the crash of that pitcher on the flagstones on your side, Steve and I go down the steps and take him out. Then we go look for Tom Solange. No. Of course. Let's go. No! <laughs> You take him, Steve. Yep. Uh, 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 he's still not out. Throw the salt in his eyes. There you are. Uh, watch it. I, I think I killed him. Well, don't stop to find out. Light's going on. Come on, Pat. We'll have to run for it. Pat, run. Hold it. Hold it. We'll have to chance the light. Wait, which way? Ahead. To the right. Middle of the next block. Well, they're right on our heels. Give me that flashlight. Where? Now, get out of here, both of you. What about you? Don't be a fool. Someone's got to be a decoy. You have a wife to think of. Now, hurry. Come on, Pat, run. Who's there? David, who's there? What is there? Well, well, must you pull the clapper loose? I come, I come. Tant Solange. Yes. Who wants her? I am Christophe's friend with my wife. We're running from Tujeo, the G Generalissimo. Christophe told me to seek refuge here and to bring you this. <gasps> the great serpent. Enter my children, quickly, quickly. So, so they have killed little Christophe. First my brother, 
than his son. Well, he will be made to pay. An eye for an eye, a heart for a bleeding heart. Now shall the tyrant bleed. Now at last, my curse shall enter his heart. Now will the great serpent uncoil and strike Hernando Trujillo dead. But it, it wasn't the generalissimo who shot Chris. There was a man named Garcia. Garcia? Oh, that jackal puppet dangled by the strings. That less than nothing with no mind or will of his own. Is he a zombie too? What do you know of zombies, my child? Nothing, I, I, except what I saw on the plane and what, what my husband tried to tell me. Tasso Lodge, forgive me, but... Yes? I have to be concerned about my wife's safety, to say nothing of my own. Is there any way we can arrange to get back to the States? No safe way, so long as Trujillo lives. <coughs> so, we settle all scores with this. It's a doll. Like the ones you sell in the store here. Uh -huh. Not quite the same. This one is like the souvenirs of El Generalissimo. With this difference, I have been a long time making him. You see, the straw is from his favorite horse's stall. The beard is made from the combings from his hairbrush. The eyes, jade chips from a dress coat button. The boots from the fingers of an old glove. This is a voodoo doll. All of him is made with things that once belonged to Trujillo. Only one last thing I needed to make the spell work. The weapon. And now, at last, I have in my hand the instrument of destruction. I straighten out the bracelet. Turn the head of this sacred serpent to the sky and death the tail towards the ground and strike. What have I done, Mr. Ramsey? You, you, you drove the bracelet like a knife straight through the doll's head. From temple to temple, Hernando Trujillo would be dead by midnight and we will all be free. Buenas tardes. I am Hernando Trujedo. Please, let me assure you that you have nothing to worry about. I ask you all to relax. Now the table is set for a late supper. I am sure you must all be famished after a long and difficult day. Won't you be my guests? Prisoners, you mean? You killed Bill Hawkins. Oh, indeed, I did not. Well, you ordered him killed. My dear senora, Mr. Hawkins was... Uh, a political. He has meddled in our internal affairs. Trujedo. Ah, yes. La bonne princesse Solange. I am honored. I had no idea you had come to live with us. I have been here longer than you know. Ah, oh, yes. I must speak to my secret police about that. Had I been told you were honoring our country with a visit, I would have arranged a more suitable welcome. I am sure you would by disposing of me as you did my brother and my nephew, Christophe. Did you see him die? There are two witnesses before your desk who did. Ah, excuse me a moment. Garcia, are you ready? See, now. Well, we must wait for a moment. Oh, uh, why? You will see. Senora Ramsey, let me ask you a question. What? Did you see Christophe Leclerc die? Yes. And you, senor? Yes. You are quite sure? Of course. Yes, look, what are you trying to prove? Ah, not I. I will let him what? do that for himself. Ah. You see? Chris! Oh, oh, mon cher baby. baby. He's alive. It, it, it's Chris. Chris, is it really you? Sure, man, sure. Don't you know me? There is no mistaking the tall, lithe figure, the regal bearing, the proud, handsome face. All those belong to Christophe Leclerc. He might easily have remarked, as Mark Twain once telegraphed, the reports of my death 
are an exaggeration. Radio, here we come, huh? So that I don't feel like a boob here, would you do that one other line? Or... That's not mine, that's Mother Nature's line. Oh, I know. She's <laughs> <laughs> over that. All right. Now, where have you people been since network radio went off and now you've all come back? Brina, what have you been doing in the meantime? Well, I've been uh, doing... It's radio. Oh, oh it's radio. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's Mike. I love it dearly. Um, I've been doing radio with commercials and TV voiceovers, uh, like Jungle Habitat, you know, the British thing. That's, I'm on safari with practically a gun in my hand, you know, doing a... I used to... Uh, thank you. Uh, I used to do... Uh, this is Elena Rubenstein. I want to tell you about color of shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll leave it now to somebody else. <laughs>